Okay, so let's talk about level design. I have here, this is the first room of the game. This is where uh, our little character will start when we press the start button and start the game. Uh, I always use a, a figure of my character in order to determine the size of the character in uh, in relevance with, uh, with the room. So we have this kind of room. We're generally in a castle and we're currently on um, something like a storage room, an old storage room, ab an abandoned one, uh, which you can see some junk here on the side. And it's generally uh, a cast aside uh, place of a castle. So we're kind of trapped here. This is locked. And our help purpose is to navigate through the stairs, climb the stairs, and open the chest and take the key. Uh, a very simple procedure, but it will help a lot to, um, to help the player to understand how the game works. We have a character which we can uh, navigate by clicking the mouse. We click here, the character goes there. We can click here, the character goes there. Then we click here, the character will return there. And we can do some action. So if we click somewhere here, uh, we saw that we want the character to climb the stairs. So she, uh, the character will start climbing and we'll reach this point and then we can click on the chest and we can open the chest. Uh, so by bringing this, um, this simple task into the table, uh, this simple room where the character just needs to go there, climb the stairs, take the key and climb down and use it on the door, uh, just by designing that, there are many issues that come up. So we need to take them into account where we are game designing. Um, so let's talk about first, uh, about the assets. About the assets we are going to need. Okay, we are definitely going to need um, the background as an image of the, of the room. And all, not only just the background, uh, every single element uh, in a separate layer. So like the wall is a separate layer, this part is a separate layer, this chunk here is a separate layer and so on. So we're going to need images. Images uh, that, cons uh, that, uh, images that constitute the environment. Okay, next up. We're going to need uh, animations, animations for the character. So we have a character and which are our actions. We can stay in the place. So we have idle animation. We can move to a spot. So we have a move animation, which can be a run or a walk, depending uh, on, our, on our preferences. And of course we will need the climb animation, up and down, and the open animation. Or if we want to have a general interact animation, which will be the same for every interaction, but that won't be uh, ideal. So we have an open chest animation, and we have the interact animation with the door. So just by implementing a very simple room, with a very simple action that the player can do, we have one, two, three, four, five animations that we need to implement. So, what else are we gonna need as far as the assets are concerned? We have the images, but these are referring to the images of the background, which means that um, constitute of everything we see in the rough sketch. But we will, we are going also to need some other images, some other images or textures, if you rather, uh, for this room in order to work. First of all, we will going to need the key image. Uh, the key as it will be displayed in the inventory. So by referring to that, we're going to need inventory sprites. Okay, let me, let me separate this thing. Okay, so these are the main assets that we're going to need. 
we're going to need the images of the background, uh, or rather, I, I should say the images of the environment, because not everything is considered background. Uh, I mean, this is like foreground, right? So we have the environment, the general environment, it's the room actually, and we're going to need those images, which is not one uh, complete image, because we want to have layers in order to determine which is front of the player and which is behind the player. So we need those images, we need the key image, which we'll find here, and needs to be displayed in the inventory, and we need inventory sprites for sorry, for the UI that will be displayed in some part of the screen, like that. I don't know how we will implement the inventory. Maybe it could be something like like that, with items displayed here. We will see. So we can also think deeper and see what else we're going to need, which could be something like um, line stuff, like we're here and we want to climb the stairs. So we have our, um, our default cursor, which uh, so will be something like, I don't know, something like a default cursor where we will see in the game. But when we want to climb the stairs, uh, the cursor can change to show us that this is an action. So instead of being something like a normal cursor like that, when we go here, it could be like something like like a stair cursor. And here it could be something like an open chest cursor or whatever. So there are different things we need to consider. Definitely those last things uh, come in a later phase. Uh, so the necessary things uh, we need to take into account that we're going to have in this, in this scene are the assets, which are the images of all the things I've mentioned, and also the animations. But also, now let's talk about uh, about more practical stuff, which we're going to be the coding and the functions that we're going to need. So we're in this room, and what can we do? First of all, I designed this room this in such a way that uh, it's one complete image and it will not uh, move. The ca I mean, the camera will not move in this room because it's, it's a fixed size. It's uh, 1920 to 1080. So it's the exact uh, size of a default image. So in order for the player to stay focused on this room and the actions that he needs to make. So we will not have camera movement just yet. We will going to have uh, a movement of a character with a click of our mouse. So that's a function. Character movement. And what else we're going to have? We're going to have an interact a general interact method, which will be either climb the stairs, open chest, open door, I mean, or better use item, or whatever. And definitely we're going to have an inventory function, which, uh, which will be something like the open the inventory and display the stuff that we have and close inventory and stuff like this. And um, these are the main functions that we're going to need. Okay, so with that being said, um, we made a, a rather complete game design of this level, of this room actually, which will be the start of the game. So we have our core mechanics, we have our core assets. Uh, I didn't mention in our assets that <laughs> We are definitely gonna need the uh, the character sprite, right? Of course, this is uh, this is taken as granted because I I mentioned that we're going to have the animations. So by having the animations, we have the sprites. But uh, for starters, we're going to have just uh, 
just a static image of our character in order to have something to work with uh, because the animations take time and it will come uh, into the course of our project. So we're going to have uh, the image of the character which will not be just a black, black figure but it will be an actual character which will, will, you will see how I design this character in the art section of this tutorial. With that being said, uh, we have completed the game design we want to make for this room. So we are going to jump into the game engine and see how we can implement on that. Okay, so now, jumping into the game engine. Uh, as I did a, uh, a small setup here. We have our scene, uh, the environment. I dropped all the layers of our environment that we painted and everything is separate layer. If you see the foreground here, the staircase, the floor, everything that is uh, separated from each other is in a separate layer. And in order to determine which is in front and which is behind, we have the hierarchy here. And for the player, we have the Z index is one and everything else is set to zero. But the foreground is also one and maybe it would be better to put the two here so it will be always in front of the player. So everything is behind the player but the foreground is in front of the player. Um, so let's call this player. And what I did here, this is a kinematic body and it has a player sprite and a collision shape. But now we don't care about the collision so we leave it empty. But the player sprite has uh, the player, the sprite we did for the player. So now um, we want to attach a script to this kinematic body uh, in order to make it move. So we'll add a new script and let's call it player player motion. Create. Okay, so we have our script here. This is the main function, the ready function that is called at the start of our the start of our of our scene when we start the scene. This is called. We also have the process function, which is like an update function. It it is called every frame. So <clears throat> we need some variables for starters, and it will be we need the destination. That we want that we want each time the player to go. So it would be a vector two, and we need a variable called distance, which I will show you in a while what we will use it for. Another one is called velocity. It is actually uh, the velocity that the player will have, and it will be dependent on the destination and the speed of a character. So it's also vector 2. And we need uh, actually the other uh, variables I will implement later. But we also need an export variable. Export means that we are uh, also able to uh, to adjust it in the editor and not just in the script. And this is the speed of the character, sorry, speed. And the default, the default speed will be 250. And this is for now. So in the ready, in the ready function, what we really need is just setting the destination to be the position. So the, the initial position of the character when we start the scene is the destination. Uh, nothing, nothing too fancy about it. And now we have our main function here. So what we want to do here is move the player according to of the position of the mouse where we click, we click to go. So first of all, we need to go project, project settings, input map and enter uh, an input variable. I already enter it. It will, it is, it will be the left mouse click. So all I did was go here and write the name of the 
of this input, click add, now it already exists. It goes here, then click add here, and it's a mouse button and a left button, and click add, but we already have it. So <clears throat> this is the input that we want to give in order to move. So to do that, we need to implement a function that takes this input and translates it into a position for the character that we want him to go. So uh, we're going to do a function and call it input. And takes a, a variable as an argument, which is called then, but we're not going to use it. It's just a default statement here. And we're going to say if input is action pressed. And the pressed action, the input that we already named, is left mouse click. So <clears throat> we're checking if this is the, um, the input that the player g gave. If it is the left, the left mouse button, then we're setting the destination to be the global mouse position for now. So this is the destination of, uh, that we want the player to go, but it's not exactly the exact destination because when we want to move in the x-axis and not in the uh, y-axis. So um, <clears throat> to do that, um, we need to include only the x variable in our velocity. So what we're having here is, let's see, if the position, and when we say position, it's a, it's a variable of the, of the kinematic body, and it takes the current position of the kinematic body. So if the position is not equal to the destination, then the distance is going to be destination minus the position. So <clears throat> what we're saying here is if a player is not currently in the destination that we want him to be, then we uh, define a distance for the difference of the current position and the destination. And with that distance, in order to define uh, the velocity that we want currently to have. So the velocity is going to be a distance normalized normalized multiplied by the speed variable. But we need a different velocity for x axis and for y axis. So for x axis, it will be this thing normalized by x and multiplied by speed. And for the y axis, it's technically going to be zero, but we're going to implement it like this, just for typical causes. It's just a uh, zero velocity on the y-axis. So <clears throat> we have our velocity for the x-axis and for the y-axis and what we only need to do is move and slide. This is a built-in function that the kinematic body uses and we only need to give it the velocity that we want the character to move. So by that we have uh, our initial motion. So what we have right now is, as you can see, a movement to the X direction as we want it. But there, there are some issues there. Uh, first of all, the player, the player sprite does not change direction that we surely want. And of course, there might be some issues with the snapping. So uh, let's see how we can fix all that. <clears throat> so we're going, what we're going to need, first of all, is to change the direction of the player. So, uh, we need to check 
whether uh, whether our destination sex position is greater or smaller than than our current position. So if it's greater, that means that we want the player to go in the right that he is current please. So if that is true, then we're taking the sprite of our kinematic body, which is called player sprite, I just named it. Player sprite. And what we're going to do with it is flip it or not. So flip it means flip horizontally. The H is for horizontal. But if we're going if to the left, we definitely if go. If we, we want to, to, to go to the it. right, then we so don't need to flip it. So we're going it. to do that. We're going to flip the animation every time. We're going to the left. And of course, again, flip it, but not actually flip it. Uh, it's just going to the default uh, direction where we're going to the right. So we're going to the right, our flip horizontal is false, and we are going to the left, our flip horizontal is true. Now, what we need is for the character to snap it in the position, in the desired position, every, one, every time we need him uh, to reach a destination. So, what I want to do is just uh, examine every occasion, just in case uh, the player doesn't go exactly where I want him to be. So, I'm going to set a margin of where uh, a margin error of when the character just reaches the destination, but not exactly when it's that just the case, then just snap it to the desired position. So I'm putting a number one to the margin error, to the margin error, and I believe that is a, a good, a good value. So we're we're setting the snap position of the of the position that we want to be to be the destination position but that's only for the x value but for the snap position of the y value the y value of the snap position we just want to be what our position's uh, y value is so snap position y equals to position y so we're, we're not ch changing the y position um so with that being uh, implemented, we have our desired snap position setting every time we are changing the destination. So we're going to say that um, if sorry if uh, the distance the x distance that's what we care about if the x distance and actually I'm going to use the square of the distance just to be sure that every time is positive. It's a positive value. If it's uh, smaller than our, than, our margin, than our margin, that means that we are in the position that we want to be. So just set the position of the character. Uh, this is a built-in function again of the kinematic body. Set the position of the character to be the snap position. <clears throat> okay, so we have that, and we're actually we, we just need to examine one last occasion, and that is when we're actually in in place, we're in the destination that we want to be. So if we're if we reach the destination and we are matching the destination vector, then just set the velocity to zero in order for our character not to move anymore. We, we, we can't just put 0 there because it requires a vector2 variable. We're saying velocity multiplied by 0. And of course, as always, I forgot the colon symbol there. So let's put it. And with all that being implemented, let's hit play and see what we're actually having here 
Um, that looks good. It moves, the character moves and changes direction. So there you have it, a very basic movement of our character. We definitely need to examine more occasions and improve on that because we will also have some problems still. Uh, we don't, we just don't want, we don't just want our player to move horizontally, but we also move, we want him to move vertically in some occasions. And there are different kinds of movements, so there are, will also be different animations. And of course, we need to examine the collisions that it, he might have with some objects. But we have our very basic movement, and on that we will build the rest of the character motion. Hello, my name is Kilo. I'm the director of an indie game development team called Dimension Omega, where we're currently working on a project called Astra, which is a 2D platformer metroidvania game. Considering following us on Instagram, where we will be uploading content of our progress. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe, it really helps support the channel.